we had a lot of limitations for our, what we could do. We only got two games total, which is, I mean, better than some teams that only played none or one. Art changes lives, and that can be mostly for the better, um, but it impacts us in some ways. Um, so this is kind of like a return to normalcy, I guess. Um, kind of brings back what, what Christmas is about. Welcome to Arizona Cat's Eye, a student production from the University of Arizona School of Journalism. I'm CJ Lala. Coaching a team of teenagers was already a difficult task, but adding in a global pandemic gave these coaches a different set of challenges. We had a lot of limitations for our, what we could do. We only got two games total, which is, I mean, better than some teams that only played none or one. Um, so unfortunately, like during games, we weren't even able to have fans in the stadium. With crowds returning to normal, this class of seniors is going to make it count. We've had a packed stadium, not only for our home games as it's opened up, but we've traveled on the road and they've been right there with us. So it's been awesome to see all those kids from freshmen to seniors getting into the, the swing of what high school is supposed to look like. Even with the pandemic still going on, people can find a sense of normalcy through sports. I mean, I th it's, it's, sports is important to come back um, as, as being part of a high school atmosphere, but sports kind of just symbolizes everything coming back to normal. There's been a lot of sad things happen this year. A fun couple of hours every week can go a long way. CJ Lala, Arizona Cat's Eye. Fine arts are important in our society, and the University of Arizona is dedicated to supporting and promoting fine arts programs here on campus. The School of Art is devoted to promoting the transformational power of art in all aspects of life, as stated in the University of Arizona School of Arts mission statement. Fine arts hold a great amount of importance in our society. They help us to express ourselves, communicate, and understand each other. I'm Aaron Coleman. I'm an associate professor in the School of Art. Art provides um, a lot of different ways of, of interacting. People seek out art and culture as entertainment. Some people seek it out as an escape. Some people look to visual culture and culture creators as sort of the, the like mirror, right? That reflects what's going on in the world. I mean, it sounds kind of cheesy, but I really do believe that art, um, art changes lives. And that can be for the, you know, mostly for the better, um, but it impacts us in some ways, and, and museums are definitely a, a part of that. Juliana Strano, Arizona Cat's Eye. Take a look west from almost anywhere in Tucson, and you will see Sentinel Peak, also known as A Mountain. Most days, one can drive their car all the way to the top, but on Mondays, the gate is closed and open only to pedestrians and bicyclists. Sentinel Peak. Named for its historic role as a lookout for spotting hostile raiding parties, today serves as a multi-use city park where people can walk, bike, or drive to the top. In modern times, the peak has been a place for Tucsonans to enjoy the view and often to meet with friends. I used to come here as a teenager, early 20s. This is where our big party spot was up top. But the peak partygoers haven't always been responsible. On October 11th, 2018, a drunk driver going the wrong way fatally struck a cyclist. The ghost bike's white silhouette today stands as a memorial and a reminder. Changes to the park's hours were made in response to give non-motorized park goers a safe time to use the road. The way it is, is really, I think, a progressive and proactive stance taken by the city, closing it all Monday, closing it Tuesday, Wednesday, and I believe Thursday until 2, so the bicyclists and the runners and the hikers can, can get uh, their adrenaline fix, and then the 
people in the vehicles can come up in the late afternoon. For Arizona Cat's Eye, this is Carl Yaris. Goats of Tucson has been greatly affected by the pandemic, but recently their classes are growing and they are taking animal therapy to a whole new level. At the Morris KU Doll Park, you can find people taking a nice stroll. But when 10 o'clock rolls around on Saturdays, goats and people come together to do yoga and reduce stress. Olivia Miltner was one of the people who participated in today's class. So much fun. I had a great time. I've never hung out with goats before, so that was a new experience for me, and it was awesome. Goats of Tucson offers classes for beginners all the way up to advanced yoga, and they offer group or private classes. Today was one of the largest turnouts that owner Emily Haddon has had. We've been doing this about two years now and the pandemic greatly affected us. Unfortunately, it's, it's greatly reduced our class sizes. It's reduced the amount of people um, scheduling private parties. So it's been really hard to keep sustaining the classes throughout that. But we just keep going and hoping we have bigger classes. And today was one of the biggest classes we've had in a long time. And we're really grateful for that. When Haddon started, she had no idea what this side business would become. I knew people would have fun and enjoy it, but I didn't realize I'd be getting letters and messages and conversations with people after class um, that still stick with me now. And it's been two years. And one of the first classes I had, I had a lady who had recently lost her husband and she hadn't laughed or had a good time in a long, you know, in a long time since he was sick and all these things were happening up to him passing away. And she came to our class and she said it was the first time she had laughed. And so, and then she felt the need to come and tell me about it, which made me feel really happy that she was sharing it with me and that she enjoyed the class and the goats that much. And it, it allowed her to forget about everything for the hour that she was in our class. And that's why I do it. Jillian Barch, Arizona Cat's Eye. While the weather might be a little bit warmer than most seasons, there's still time to enjoy a nice winter wonderland here in Tucson. Here on Church and Broadway, the Tucson Convention Center is holding a very special winter event for all citizens. One that involves holiday spirit, cheer, and some skills on the ice. My name is Allison Souza. I'm an event coordinator here at the TCC. I'm in charge of the holiday ice rink. Oh, it's a public ice skating rink and people can come, the public can come and skate and have fun, get that ice experience. <laughs> Local Tucsonans have loved coming back to this annual event and others are just now experiencing it for the first time. I've seen the ice rink around like Tucson during the holidays for the last couple years and always thought it'd be cool and uh, then uh, my, my partner wanted to uh, go ice skating and that's uh, what drove us out here. We clean the seals uh, every 24 hours, and that is due to COVID. We also clean the tables and the skates, and we don't want anybody to get sick. And finally, this feeling of Christmas couldn't come at a better time, as the holiday cheer is being felt by many Tucsonans. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's great to see people out and enjoying themselves again uh, after the, the crazy year that we've had, for, or the crazy two years that we've had. Um, so this is kind of like a return to normalcy, I guess. Um, kind of brings back what, what Christmas is about, which is uh, the community and your families and friends and getting together and having a good time. This is Gabriel Grano, Cat's Eye. The University of Arizona lost their football rivalry game against Arizona State, but fans in another state saw two teams fight with everything to gain in the Big 12 Conference. Oklahoma State and Oklahoma are facing off in Stillwater this weekend for the annual Bedlam rivalry. The intense competition has Oklahomans all over the state excited. The Sooners have won the last 16 Bedlam games against the Cowboys. This season, both teams are ranked top 10 in the nation. Fans are excited as the outcome of this game determines who Oklahoma State will play in the Big 12 championship game next week. Um, I graduate here in a year. I can't wait to be OSU alum. Honestly, you know, it's a great tradition. Um, I, think it's, I, I think it's great for both schools. Sad, sad it's about to be over. 
This might be the last Bedlam game played in Stillwater, with OU transferring to the SEC Conference in 2025. You know, the fact that this may be the last time Bedlam is in Stillwater is hard. You know, being an alum, it's tradition. You know, everyone's so excited. Everyone looks forward to this date. Four-point game. The tradition holds a special place in students' hearts after the tradition began in 1904. Stillwater is expected to have over 60,000 visitors this weekend. Olivia Bryan, Arizona Cat's Eye. This has been Arizona Cat's Eye, a student production from the University of Arizona School of Journalism. I'm CJ Lala. Thanks for watching.